The telephone in your home is only one of six million in Australia, and today, on our regular career segment, we take a look at the person who is responsible for the installation and maintenance of telephone equipment, the telecommunication tradesman. To tell us what the career of a telecommunication tradesman involves and the training required, I have with me Roy Boucher, the supervising instructor at the Telecom Training Centre in Melbourne. Hello, Roy, and welcome to the program. Thank you. Is the tradesman mainly concerned with the equipment in the home? No, there's much more equipment in special telecom buildings called telephone exchanges, where uh, telephone calls are connected together in a local area, and there's other equipment required to connect calls over trunk lines to remote areas like Alice Springs and Darwin. Mm -hmm. And what is the training involved to become a telecommunications The, the training transmit? is a four-year course in which the first one and a half years is full-time in a telecom training centre. The remaining two and a half years is on-the-job training and the tradesman um, comes out of his training as a first-class tradesman. Mm -hmm. Well, recently our cameras visited the telecom training school. Perhaps we could look at that film now and you can explain it to us. Yes. This is the outside of our telecom training centre in Melbourne, and this is one of the theory classes that we conduct in the early part of our training. It involves roughly 50% of the course, and practical training involves the other half of the course. The trainees work on laboratory equipment that you can see in the background. Here we have an instructor who's demonstrating some principle of theory which the trainees will later verify with their own laboratory equipment. You see measurements are taken to prove principles. How many people in a class at a time? Roy? There are 24 in a class of this size. Now, the practical training that you see depicted here we have a class of uh, 10 or 12. The activity they're engaged on here is uh, mainly concerned with identifying colours in wires and connecting these wires to the correct terminations on a special piece of equipment. You see there that we have a, uh, a girl apprentice. She's preparing to solder a connection. She's wearing safety spectacles uh, as a safety measure instructor is telling her what's the next thing that she should do. He will show her uh, exactly how to manipulate the wires in that exercise. Here we have another class that's slightly more advanced in the training scheme and the um, equipment here requires some adjustment and some testing as well as the termination of wiring and the instructor will demonstrate to the trainee what measurements are needed and how to go about them. You see he has a portable telephone there which will show the trainee how to connect into the equipment to conduct the test. That's the special equipment, is it, for Yes. Testing? The equipment that you see operating there is uh, typical of what one finds in telephone exchanges. And this shows the inside of a model telephone exchange we have at the training centre. And the class is one of the people of around third or fourth year standing and uh, they learn how the equipment operates, they learn the circuitry, they learn how to trace calls and uh, here we see a trainee actually testing a switch in that exchange. You see the operation of the mechanism in that shot. Mm. Does it take them a long time to sort this sort of thing out? Yes, it's quite complex. This shows practical training again, but oriented towards the uh, customer's equipment. There is a telephone being assembled. A, a, trades, a tradesman in training is learning how to uh, put it together successfully in the process, uh, becomes quite familiar with it and is able to clear faults on it uh, later on. Um, you find a dial being placed in correct position now and uh, the outer cover is being assembled and uh, the screws will be tightened up underneath and the telephone instrument should be working correctly. We'll test that in a moment. And checking that the dial operates correctly. The 
instrument we see there is called the wall telephone. And in this class, the trainees are learning how to install them in customers' homes. And in some businesses, there are much more than one phone. And the phone lines have to be connected through connecting boxes, as we see on the wall in this, um, this shot here. The wires have to be correctly terminated and recorded. The instructor there is checking on the correct wiring of a single telephone. The wires are carefully placed under a screw and tightened, and the cover of the connection is, uh, is being secured. And uh, when that is done, you plug the telephone in, and uh, it should be a working service. Now, at the end of the four years of training, they qualify as tradesmen, and this shows a typical uh, on-the-job task that a tradesman would perform. They've been called out to attend a, a, a fault in a customer's service and they will embark with their um, vehicle and they shortly will arrive at the business premises of the customer. This is one of the telecom vehicles which uh, we use to service telecom equipment. The tradesman has his kit of tools, which you take with him into the building. And he's going in the front entrance there. There are two tradesmen on this job so that they can assist each other with testing. Are there usually two of them together or? Quite often. Uh, they've asked the switchboard operator in this case what the fault was that she was having. And they're now going into the small cubicle where the switchboard equipment is housed and they will uh, investigate it and, and endeavour to locate the cause of the problem and uh, correct it. Uh, the equipment's being uncovered by the tradesman and uh, he's inspecting to see that uh, it's operating satisfactorily. Well, I would imagine we, we see a different sort of um, a telephone there. Perhaps we could talk about that in a minute. Does equipment change much and become more sophisticated? Yeah, it is becoming uh, more sophisticated as time goes on. And of course, training must keep pace with this modern development, and uh, therefore training courses are progressive, and uh, qualified tradesmen will return for time, from time to time to do short courses to keep up with mm. recent developments. Well, how is this telephone different, Roy? This is different to the one that customers might have in their home at the moment, in that it, it has push buttons to generate the numbers rather than a rotating dial. But uh, it is functions identically. Mm. Is there any advantage to that sort of a telephone? The advantage here is that it is easier to generate the numbers, even though the call is completed in the same time. Mm -hmm. And what are the prerequisites required to become an apprentice in this trade? The prerequisites are that they be under 21 in the year in which they apply. Uh, they must complete a competitive examination, and the subjects would be general maths, general science, technical information and general knowledge. Yeah. And the um, successful candidates are ranked in an order of merit and the ones on the top of the list are invited in to um, commence training in this career. They, of course, must have a medical examination to establish their health mm -hmm. as well. And for people who would like further information about this career, where would they obtain it? Well, firstly, they'd obtain the information from the careers officer in their own school, and uh, secondly, they could get it from the um, Commonwealth Employment Service in their own local area. Mm. Thank you very much, Roy, for coming in and telling us all about that. It was very interesting. As details on this program may have altered or may not be applicable in your state, it's suggested that you check with your career reference centre or careers advisor in your school for up-to-date information.